I'm gonna start using the arrow keys because that's way easier. Okay, so like, what? So he wants to listen to the cassette. You want this? That's not funny. You made him sad. Well, sorry. I mean, that's really the only thing I can think of. Like, the closest thing I have to what you're talking about. Okay, um... Let's see if we can go back here. Wait, 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 hang on. Sometimes you sit on the floor and lean against the dryer to give yourself a massage? You tug on the handle and the dryer door pulls open immediately. The dryer is empty. Clean? You reach in and grab all the fuzz in the lint trap. There's no trash can nearby, so you suddenly drop it on the floor and kick it nonchalantly under the dryer. Okay. Mom's trusty top-loading washing machine. She gets so angry when Chad forgets to empty his pockets. Use? You have to shut the door before you can run the wash. Am I washing clothes? Ah! You place the stepladder beneath the attic hatch. Walls are too close for comfort. There's little room to move around. Screwdriver. You pick at it a bit with the screwdriver, but it doesn't do much good. The room's got. The room's grown too small for you to fit. You attempt to stop the oncoming walls by wedging yourself between them, but it's a losing battle. All right. So clearly, you use the step ladder here. I don't I think we need another item. You slide open the hatch. What? You wedge the screwdriver into the coupling and use leverage to open it up. It doesn't take much. The pipe bursts open and gobs of gross goop gush out. So is that... Monster? The oozing mass is pushing its way to the edges of the room. So is this monster blood? I guess it's holding it open for me, right? Slime keeps pouring out of the pipe, filling the room. Slide open the hatch. The room is filling with glowing or growing pulsing ooze. It's starting to climb your legs. You pull down the ladder. With a sharp jerk, you pull downward into the mass of goo. It leaches every ounce of hope from your body and you give up. What? I guess we gotta figure out some way to defeat the monster blood. I don't know. You feel like you're being watched. You glance around and can't see anyone, but you're certain there's something out there. Really? It's very odd. So, there was this spooky tree over here. A very large creature has appeared in the clearing. It seems to be grinning as it rubs its front paws together excitedly. Is this the beast from the east? It's a very large furry creature. You find it hard not to notice its rows of glistening, razor-sharp teeth. This was one of my favorite Goosebump books. You're it! The beast shouts. I excited to play game. Can't wait. So hungry. I'm it. The creature barks a husky laugh. You're it! You're it! He chants. Yeah, I can't remember what happens, though. It's like a game of tag. So if I'm it, what does it do? His large toothy grin goes larger and toothier. That part of game, of course. You can't help but notice his glistening claws and powerful jaws. All right, let's play. Well, okay, so I'm it, meaning what? I chase you? <laughs> He's laughing again, great. 
Maybe I give hint. This tree is hidden prize space. You get many points, level up. Then maybe strong enough to win. The tree is so big it must be incredibly old. Right, right, right. Wait, do you think we're playing a game? Hehe, <laughs> not think, no. Also, I'm winning. Better think fast, you. All right, we'll play. You nod, your mind racing as to what this game could possibly be and to what might happen if you lose. Good, good, this should be fun. I don't suppose you might give me a hint. Hint, maybe against rules, but might make game more interesting. Let think. To claim prize here, you must be powerful. Right now, I powerful. Okay. Ooh, uneven dirt. You try to dig with your bare hands, but it's too tightly packed. Okay, well, we'll use the spade here. The beast holds out a meaty paw to stop you. Tut, afraid I can't allow. It licks its lips eagerly. You can't allow. With a guttural tone, the beast speaks. Strike two. Its mouth is opening wider as it walks towards you. You out. Okay, so in the beast from the east, you have to tag from the east. Which I think he's to the east of me right now, so I have to get behind him somehow. That's the only thing I can figure out. Maybe we hit him with the shoe. Oh, okay. Well, that's, we died. Oh, with a flourish, you make the top hat disappear into your bag. I missed that. I wonder if I need that for something. Oh, let's open the coffin. You struggle with the handle, but it won't budge. You do manage to kick up a thick cloud of dust. You pick at it a bit with the screwdriver, but it doesn't do much good. Maybe we'll come back to this later. I don't think there's anything else I can do. Alright. Um, we'll, we'll go back to the house now. I think... I think there's a couple things I can do, at least. You locate the source of the dripping at last. Strange green liquid is seeping out of the pipe overhead. There's also a bag a few feet away with something inside it. Well, let's get that. Taste? That doesn't look like water, though. It's some kind of green ooze. It's the monster blood, man. You open the bag and drop its contents into your stuff. A key and a chess piece. So there's some sort of chess puzzle later on. The pipe overhead rattles violently. There's a loud rushing and then... Don't tell me we're about to die. Boom! What happened? It's everywhere! You stumble back, every thought in your head screaming, run! It's another tunnel, you hope it leads to the entrance. Uh... You scramble backwards hoping to reach the entrance before that massive slime catches you. Crap! We can outrun it. I don't really remember where to go. Ugh. I guess we just keep going back, right? There's no wrong answer. If we just keep going back. You tumble out of the cupboard. Achievement unlocked. It came from beneath the sink. But no, that, was, that wasn't the sponge, though. You tumble out of the cupboard, sprawling across the floor. You're finally out of that tunnel. You take several appreciative breaths to calm down. The monster blood didn't follow you out here, so you're safe for now. You happily kick the cupboard closed. Okay, good. So... What is with the... Well, okay, we got a surfboard here? Bathroom. It's the key to your downstairs bathroom. You can tell because of the surfboard keychain. Okay, can I just say... The TV turned itself on. A picture is coming into focus. It looks like some kind of ventriloquist dummy. It's talking, but there's nobody else there. Where's his voice coming from? Attention, town center galleria customers. The mall will be closing early today. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. <laughs> My friends and I have big plans for tomorrow, though, so definitely stop by. <laughs> and if our special guest is listening, he knows who he is. We have a message. You can't ignore us forever. Your fate's already been written. 
So let's just flip to the last page. <laughs> the TV shuts off abruptly, leaving the room in silence once more. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really listening to what he said. I was more concentrating on, on talking. I don't know what to do with this dryer and washer, but we can we can go into here now. Just slide the key into the lock and turn. Let's go. You don't have to go at the moment, but you decide to check out the bathroom. Well, we can get the password to his computer. It only takes one glance at the downstairs bathroom to realize this is not a bathroom. It's a dark room, like photo lab at school. Okay, well, let's do, use this. Careful, you don't want to expose it to the light. Well, I don't know how to develop photographs. Tub. This shallow tub is filled with a clear liquid. Okay, tongs. As usual, you shove these directly into your inventory. It's a sink. It's probably used for a lot of different uh, things in here. I don't know what all this crap is. A bottle of developer. It brings out the dark areas of the images. They really did their research. A bottle of stopper solution. It neutralizes the effects of the developer on the photograph. A bottle of fixer. It ends the development process and cleans out the chemicals on the paper. A variety of different pictures hang on the line. None of them look the least bit familiar. You pick a photograph that stands out and plug it from the line. Now we have four pages of inventory. Four pages. Okay, so use with this. You pick up the photo paper and prepare to develop it. You've never done this before. Maybe you should get some information first. Ah, screw it. We're just gonna wing it, man. It's not much of one. The image is super light. That's fine. You get the stinking feeling you mess up the process. If only there was some way to start at the beginning. Okay, so... I mean, I don't know. Eh? Wedge your screwdriver under the 1988 tab and push. It pops off immediately and clatters to the floor. A shriek echoes through the through the house. Sounds like it came from the entryway. It rings in your ears before abruptly stopping, as if it never happened at all. Oh, that girl said she'd lived here for 17 years, right? And it's 2004. So she's gone. I wonder if that was like a choice. Well, we can go into the room now. My, my own bedroom, I think. Let's go inside. You seek solace in your bedroom. As you set foot in your bedroom, a wave of relief washes away your apprehension. It's unchanged except for one conspicuous addition. What is that? The piggy bank? Your bed always feels so comfy and safe. Part of you wants to curl up and hide until this all blows over. Yeah, we're not doing that. You slide the nightstand drawer open. Games? Oh, that's right. You stashed some of your favorite video games in here when David came over. He obviously didn't find them. Phew! You don't use your nightstand, okay. Take them. You decide you'd better hold on to these games. Adrift off Vega? What's this? Is that like a button? Mom got so mad when you hung all these posters up. But what does she know? You'll love these bands forever. Yeah. These bands. You keep your favorite childhood toys on the shelf. Your taste always been a little creepy. I guess the chessboard is the addition. You pull a drawer slightly, resulting in an ear-shattering wood-on-wood squeal. No, never again. That noise is the main reason your clothes are all over the floor. If only Mom understood. Is this like a cassette player? Doesn't look like we can click on it. Take? Oh, we wash the clothes. You ball the clothes up and shove them into your backpack. Here's the one thing that doesn't belong. You never had a chess set. This seems like somewhat of an antique model. You hunch over the board and sink deeply into thought. The 
king. Interesting setup. You think you could probably put the king in check? Yeah, probably. You'd never move one of the opposing pieces. That's cheating. So I guess, are these the... Possible spaces? I guess I need three, right? So like... then I need a knight for right there and that would put him in uh, checkmate because then he can't move there 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 and he can't take the rook so we're missing one piece and then we can solve that that was pretty easy you crack the bathroom door slightly duck into the bathroom for a moment okay you're in the bathroom it smells a little musty in here you consider a nice hot shower to calm down but decide to wait until later mirror you take a good look at yourself in the mirror, fixing a few uncooperative hairs. At least you don't see any pimples. Is this a laundry chute? You hold the clothes out over the chute before letting go. It bangs against the chute walls on its way down. Jump. We're gonna die. Eh, you're not gonna risk that. Not today. Hand mirror. I'll take that. A flimsy hand mirror, but hey, it's good enough to show your reflection. Yeah, that is good. Maybe that's how we can beat the beast from the east, actually. By pulling a classic clone. You open the door to the next room, which you hope is the guest room. You slip out the door on the right. Mom would flip if she saw the guest room like this. It looks like a toy store exploded. It's an enormous stack of toys. Dolls, stuffed animals, maybe even... Before you could finish your thought, a robot emerges from the pile. He totters towards you before pointing his laser blaster right between your eyes. Remember the toy from somewhere? An Annihilator 3000, you think? It doesn't seem like he's playing. This is from a Give Yourself Goosebumps, uh, book. You won't be intimidated by a toy. You chuck the toy dino directly at its head, but it bounces off. The Annihilator takes its turn next, shooting a deadly laser beam your direction. Alright. Well, but... I was thinking the dino could come to life and battle him for supremacy, but I guess not. What? Back here in MC Escher land. Stand at the foot of infinity. It just keeps saying don't. Well, okay. I mean, I guess this works. You dig through the laundry and pull out a mask. There's an unsettling energy about it, but you can't say no to a free mask. It's the haunted mask. H mask. The scariest mask you've ever seen. Just holding it, you feel drawn to its power in an uncomfortable way. It's dangerous. Whew. I think earlier in the series I said Escape from Horrorland was the best-selling Goosebump book, but actually I think it's The Haunted Mask. And I think Escape from Horrorland is, is uh, second. I could be wrong on that. It's definitely one of the most popular uh, items. What about the, what about the clothes? Pull the mask over your face. Something doesn't feel right. You yank the mask off and find that you're gasping for air. What is this thing? Impressive loot. Me not realize you such high level. It backs away nervously. Maybe we play again someday. 
The hulking brute shuffles backwards, facing you, until he reaches a safe distance. He then bounds off into the tree. Yes! Achievement unlocked. Be afraid. Be very afraid. I want to see if that was the tagline on the book. Okay, so... Use the spade here. After three scoops, you uncover something. A key card? You tuck the security badge into your bag. Is there anything else here? You collapse onto your bed and shut your eyes. In mere moments, you drift off. You shoot up in bed with a start. You're more rested, but doubt you slept as long as it feels. I wonder what the repercussions of that are. How can I charge my phone also? It's dead. All right, let's keep looking around. Oh, is this gonna steam up the mirror? You empty the entire bottle of dish soap at the Annihilator's feet. It attempts to walk towards you, but the soap proves too much. It swings its arm and legs rapidly, trying to regain its footing, and falls flat on its mechanical face. Achievement unlocked. Toy Terror, batteries included, which was a uh, Give Yourself Goosebumps book, I believe. If the robot seemed angry before, he's certainly furious now. Fortunately, he can't even see you. It's too slippery for him to stand up. There's a panel on his back and could probably be popped open, so let's go ahead and do that. With the screwdriver. You carefully unscrew the panel on the back of the robot. And we're gonna take these batteries out. You pop the batteries out of the annihilator and pocket them. The robot abruptly stops moving without another sound. Good, so we got batteries, which I'm guessing are for a cassette player that we give to the ghost. But I don't know where the cassette player is. Or if there's even anything else to get in here. I did take a picture of the Annihilator with the haunted camera, and it gave me a hint. A puddle of shiny liquid. So that's how I knew to use the dish soap. It seems like using the haunted camera, you know, it's a good way to solve some of these more obscure puzzles. Because I, I never would have thought of using the dish soap. I might have thought of it, but like, with an inventory of this many items, you know, I mean, I have almost 40 items. It's hard to pick the uh, correct one. The Annihilator 3000 doesn't seem so threatening without its batteries. It's now as harmless as any other toy. <laughs> Good. Alright, I don't know if there's anything else to do in here. So I guess we'll leave. Uh, I wonder if that kid has a cassette player. I don't know, actually. He might just, like, he might just, uh, ooh, might just need the batteries. I doubt it for some reason. That's not funny. You made him sad. So I gotta find a cassette player with batteries. And the cassette, I'm, I'm guessing. You kneel down and carefully pick a blue rose. Ouch, those are some sharp thorns. Did I seriously get another item? A perfectly normal rose, other than the fact its petals are deep blue. So can I get the hose? No, you had enough trouble last time. Thank you for answering that. Now, one thing that kind of annoys me is that when I use the camera, like, I can't take pictures of inanimate objects. Which, those are most of the puzzles, so... You carefully remove the photo paper from the developer. Now what? Alright, so... I left it in there for like exactly a minute, and it worked. So I'm gonna save now. So now, we put it... in this stuff? The stopper solution. 
the photo paper sits in the stopper solution. So I guess I gotta leave it in there for like another minute. Oh, also, I forgot to take one of the deco plates from the dining room. You know, I'm not convinced that you actually use all these items. I think a lot of them you just have, like the shrunken head. I don't think that we actually use that on anything. Same with uh, jelly jam, purple peanut butter. I think they're just references. I think this hat I was supposed to use on the rabbit early on, uh, Amazo, and I think it would have given me something for that. Or an, like an achievement. I think a lot of these are just to unlock achievements, honestly. So, okay. I'm watching my timer on my recording to see. I'm gonna wait exactly a minute because it worked last time. Got just like five more seconds. Alright. Pinch the photo paper and lift it out of the stopper. Now what? Now we save, that's what. Okay, now let's put it in this last solution, I guess. Dip the photo paper into the fixer. What does this do? A ball of fixer. It ends the development process and cleans out the chemicals on the paper. So, I'll just wait one more minute. You know, I'm thinking the way that this is gonna work is I'm gonna develop this photo be able to hack into my dad's computer, get something from that, and then hopefully be able to get into the attic. That's what I'm hoping, anyway. And then the attic, the, probably that's where the cassette player will be, and then I'll give the cassette player to the ghost kid, and then we'll complete the house. And then I'm hoping we can progress to other areas, because Slappy told us about the Galleria Mall, but I can't go there yet. I tried walking all around town, and there's no, there's no way to get there, so... I don't know. My phone's dead. I think... I think you're supposed to call your brother or something. But... I'm not able to do that yet. As you gingerly remove the photo paper from the fixer, you realize you have a legitimate photograph. Now what? That's a great question. I don't know... I don't know what now. Let's look at it. It's undeveloped photo paper. There's a photograph locked away, you need to develop it. So do I put it in the water now? Yeah, okay, I got it, I got it. We'll use the tongs again and put it in the sink. You place the photograph into the photo wash and summon up all your patience. Five minutes pass and it looks like you're done. You can take your photograph, thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, if I have to wait another minute, you take the developed photograph out of the wash. Almost done. We mean almost done. It's a photo you were developing. All that remains now is to hang it up to dry. Oh my... You clip the photo to the line and wait for it to dry. Are we seriously waiting for it to dry? You close your eyes and take a very short nap. You pull the photo down off the line. It was a lot of work, but the results are worth it. I highly disagree. You developed this yourself. It's a picture of someone's head. Great. I don't understand what I did that for. You turn on the water, feeling it with your hand until it's nice and hot. Then you switch it to shower and let it spray harmlessly in the tub. Now it comes up. The mirror is completely fogged up except for this one spot. Looks like someone wrote a message with their finger. It says 1081-943. Maybe it's January 8th, 1943. I don't know. Well then what did I develop the photograph for? I mean, I guess that makes a lot more sense for the password, but... Okay, I got it. I got it. You open your favorite search page and think of subjects to enter. I don't know, man. Photo. Oh, this tells you... So I completed the puzzle without all this stuff. Oh my god. Yeah, this tells you exactly how to do it. Okay, back. So... Music? 
your favorite digital music marketplace. You click on the search bar. Uh, search. For several empty moments, you stare at the search bar. No specific songs or artists are coming to mind. Must be the weirdness of the day. Okay. Uh, dogs. After scrolling through the results, you choose a promising looking information hub. You're presented with three options. I guess this is for Fifi? I don't know. The breed listing is comprehensive. After a brief perusal, you self-consciously select Poodle. The images look vaguely similar to the canine you met earlier, but none have quite the same insane glean in their eyes. Appropriately, there's also plenty of useful information about the breed. Temperament, intelligence, famous poodles in history, and everything else anyone could possibly ever want to know about poodles. Nothing about insatiable bloodlust. You question Fifi's pedigree. Socially, dogs operate in a pack structure. At the top of the pack is the Alpha, the strongest dog in the group. Alphas are established after a show of power or ability. When faced with proof of an Alpha's strength, weaker animals have no choice but to submit. This is a common behavior in most pack animals, certainly all dogs and similar species. Thank you. Tired of supermarket foods filling your beloved pet with chemicals and byproduct meal? With Yum Pet's new veterinarian recommended scientific well development formula, those days are over. We start with whole proteins, nature's healthiest and most delicious proteins. We add in wholesome fruits and vegetables, proven to benefit your pet's coat, energy level, and ear health. And that's it, no chemicals, no wheat or soy gluten byproducts. You wouldn't feed your child junk food, junk food, so why do it to your pet? New well development formula only from Yum Pet, okay. Not really sure. I think these are just supposed to be hints. I guess this is like if you don't know how to play chess. So these are just hints, basically. Back. That's all. I don't get anything else. But I need. Ah! I need progress. I need to make progress. Looks like a large picture frame for hanging portraits. There's not a picture in it, though. Oh my god. Oh my god! You know what to do now! Okay, so we got this headless guy, right? You slide the photograph into the frame, a perfect fit. Now you have a framed picture. You cautiously set the portrait onto a hook in the wall. It takes a moment to convince yourself if it's hanging straight. <sighs> At least it fits in with the others, you guess. That's something. Open? You tap on the photo and it swings open, revealing a compartment hidden in the wall. Alright. It's a chess piece. Knight, you think. What, you don't call it the horse man? All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. I, I think finally we can make progress. That's all I needed. I just, I missed that frame. I guess I just didn't see it. This is kind of more of a hidden object game than a point and click. I mean, they're similar, but... Chess, you shout, waving the piece around. This is evidently not how chess is played. I like, I like moments like that. All right, let's put this uh, king into check. Checkmate. Place the knight on the board. That's not checkmate, actually. That's check. Right? Yeah, because the... Well, no, because... No, that is checkmate. Because even if you take the knight, the king gets taken the next turn, so whatever. Uh, you hear a small click as the lower compartment slides open! Are you serious? It's one of those ancient cassette tape players, you think. Even Chad never had one of these growing up. They're not ancient. I've got one right in my closet. I can pull the thing out right now, but I'm not going to, because that'd just be... kind of try hard. Look, I know what these are. All right, so now we can defeat this ghost. We can go out to the thing and... Ah, we can complete the house now. Pop the batteries into the cassette player, each one slotting into place. Let's 
go ahead and use this. The cassette slots into the player perfectly. Wait, no, it won't shut. You turn them both over in your hand, searching for the one detail you missed. Aha! You try flipping the tape over. Yep, it was upside down. Fits perfectly now. You were such, oh man. You were such a 2000s kid. Here we go. You press play and a funky tune plays from the speakers. The boy smiles, swaying back and forth to the rhythm. He vanishes, his presence bounding away from the house. A door directly above you unlocks with a loud thunk. Achievement unlocked! The ghost next door, which is actually one of the Goosebumps books that I can't remember anything about. I think it was one of the early ones. There were like a bunch of similar ones. There was like, My Best Friend is Invisible, The Ghost Next Door, Let's Get Invisible. Like, there's a lot of those. All right, let's save. I think I know what to do now. Uh, open. You push open the door to your parents' room. Really? You creep stealthily into the master bedroom. Oh my god. It's an overwhelmingly creepy twist on your parents' bedroom. Well, let's explore everything. The biggest, comfiest pillows you've seen in a while, which means they're probably slobbering monsters of some kind. That's true, I'm really surprised we haven't gotten killed by the gruel yet. The sponge. If you don't know what the gruel is, uh, well, it's a sentient sponge that feeds off of misery. Um, it also has eyes and fangs, so fuck that. It's a big trunk of valuables, you assume. You've never actually seen what's inside of it. Well, let's open it up. You kneel down and locate the chest combination lock. You'll need to input the correct code, what? All right. I'm not gonna sleep in this bed. The artwork on the wall is different. The signature says Claude Moaning. I'm, I'm assuming that that's a uh, pun off of a famous artist. The large window is the most striking element of the room. Mom loves to open it on humid summer nights. You undo the latch and swing the window open. Saliva. A thick gummy liquid is slowly dripping from the gargoyle's fangs. I'm not gonna taste it. I am, however, gonna put it into this container, which I've been waiting to do. You hold out the empty container, making sure to catch several big bloopy drops of the substance as it runs off the gargoyle's mouth. Okay, so. Got that, so now we can get into the attic. And that's, that's like, super important. Let's open this up though. As you approach the closet, it slides open on its own. So basically, so this is just so we can move around the house quicker. That's all this is. It's not a big deal. The code, I don't, what's the code? That doesn't work. I don't think I have a code yet. Well, we'll go to the attic and see what uh, what's up there. All right, so this is probably this is probably the puzzle that's giving me the most trouble. So we'll put out. If you're wondering how to get into the attic, if you're watching this video for that reason alone, here's how you do it. I assume that this will work. Screwdriver on pipe. Monster blood's everywhere. Now, I know from taking a picture of the monster blow with the high camera that we need to use the uh, gargoyle saliva, so... Use. You hurriedly open the bottle, empty its contents into the green slime. Tension hangs in the air. The spots the gargoyle saliva touch solidify, hardening into gray stone. The effect spreads until the entire floor is covered in petrified sludge. So now... I assume we've stopped the walls? Open the hat, pull down the ladder, climb. With one last push, you throw yourself into the attic. Good. Achievement unlocked, how I got my shrunken head. I don't really understand what that has to do with the shrunken head, but anyway. The attic is about as spooky as you'd expect. Dirt, grime, cobwebs, and a big ornate mirror. Which, I think this is from Let's Get Invisible. I think, from what I remember, it's a it's a mirror that turns you invisible or something like that in the attic. It's the most expensive mirror you've ever seen. 
The frame is extremely ornate and metal. Iron, maybe? The image has a depth to it you've never experienced. I'm trying to explain the references, how I remember them. I don't remember a whole lot about a lot of them, though. Just so those of you that aren't familiar with Goosebumps can kind of understand what's going on. It's just a bunch of your old junk. Well, let's search. You hear muffled laughter. Okay. You sift through the boxes, giving each one a cursory glance. Nothing jumps out at you. I guess that's good. Pinata? The colorful remains of a pinata lie broken in the corner. You feel an icy hand on your shoulder. Okay, I think this is I think this is worth doing. You center the subject and snap a picture. A moment later, the photograph slides out. Let's take a look. A Polaroid photo of two mirrors in your attic, one large and freestanding, the other hand mirror. The bigger of the two is shattered. So I'm guessing we're gonna die here. Your reflection shuddered for a moment. Let's just let ourselves die. I wanna see what happens. Your reflection lifts its arm and points directly at you. No thanks, if you're that desperate for candy, there are plenty of other options. Cavity City comes to mind. The reflection reaches, its hands together for your neck. The window provides a single beacon through the musty darkness of the attic. A spasm racks your body rigid, and you topple to the ground, unable to move. You roll your eyes, straining to see your assailant, but all you see is the mirror. I guess it's not, I guess it's not, let's get invisible. That's different. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably gonna get some of the references wrong. It's just what happens. All right. Uh, I mean, it's been like 15 years since I've read some of these books. Where's my uh, hand mirror? There it is. Let's use that. You spin to face the reflection, holding out the hand mirror you've been carrying. The image shudders and a crack explodes across the glass. A faceless voice screams, the mirror shatters, and everything falls silent. Achievement unlocked. I was your evil twin. I think that's it. Ooh, what's this? It's a Goosebumps story called Let's Get Invisible. Maybe it is. I don't know. You used to read Goosebumps all the time when you were a kid. Of course. You knew that dummy on TV looked familiar. It was Slappy, the evil ventriloquist dummy. How'd you not realize that? How, do you, how have you not gotten any of the references up until just now? That is the cover art for Let's Get Invisible, though. So, is that it? Up here? Nothing jumps out at you. Old TV. It's a really old black and white television. You have no idea why your family kept it. Let's take it. Uh, what are you gonna do? Just shove a bunch of TVs in your backpack? No, you wisely decide to leave it here. I wisely decide, huh? Well, like, what, what else is up here then? Is this it? Let's take the Goosebump book, man. You pick up the children's horror novella and notice the author's name, R.L. Stein. If only you had a way to get a hold of him somehow, maybe he'd know what to do. If his Goosebumps monsters are real, everyone's in a lot of trouble. You better get to the mall. I'll take that as a... as a hint to move, move along. You hop down the stairs, mind racing for a way to reach the mall, when a solution stumbles clumsily through the door. You slam directly into your brother as you leap down the stairs. He barely seems to notice. Hey John, glad you're here. You see all this crazy stuff going on? Hey Chad. <laughs> uh, I know right, are you okay? Hmm, not really. He says while looking around, making sure the coast is clear. I realized something about mom and dad. Why have they been acting so weird lately? They're monsters? Oh no, of course, it makes perfect sense. When did those creatures replace our parents? Huh? No, no, our parents are the same as they've always been. No, I was trying to say it's even more shocking. I'm not their son at all. I can prove it, John. You'll say. Mom keeps important documents in the trunk at the further bed. Go up and get my birth certificate. <laughs> I don't know why I'm making him sound like that, sorry. Normally you completely ignore everything he just said. 
That's not nice. Even by Chad standards, this lace theory is ridiculous. However, today it might just work to your advantage. I'll make you a deal since you're my brother. You know, probably. I'll go get your birth certificate, but afterwards you have to give me a ride to the mall. I know how to stop these monsters. No, you don't. That's BS, man. You have no idea. But I can't do it without your help. Do we have a deal? Sounds like we'll have a deal, then. You'll get the birth certificate, so my fingerprints are nowhere to be seen. Er, and I'll try to do the mall afterward. Good. Remember, the certificate's upstairs in Mom and Dad's room, in a trunk. The code to unlock it is 1992. My birth year. Okay, good. So he's like 23. I wonder what, like, oh no, no, this is the wrong one. I went the wrong way. Uh, I wonder what uh, book chat's from. If anything, I don't know. Okay. Thank you, I know, I know the code. Clefunk. The trunk's lock disengages and its lid pops open slightly. You lift it the rest of the way. Among other things, your brother's birth certificate is in the trunk. That must be what he was after. You carefully roll up the birth certificate and head downstairs. Your brother's birth certificate clearly indicates mom and dad are his parents. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. Okay, uh, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, your brother Chad, he has a wild theory about his upbringing. <laughs> this is so weird. You happily present the birth certificate, eager to receive your end of the bargain. Oh, guess I was wrong. He says, sadly, poorly hiding that the air has been knocked out of him. What? Chad shakes his head. I was so certain. You clear your throat. <clears throat> so about the ride to the mall. All right. He's certainly shaping up to be a pleasant companion. If it's that important, let's get going. He leaves the house, shuffling to his car while you follow. You hope that the drive improves his mood. Are we done? Are we done with the house? The vibe in here is too much, so you head back outside for some air. You're standing outside the haunted version of your house. Your brother Chad's there too. He looks confused by the whole ordeal, but you can tell he's trying not to show it. Let's go. Still need a ride. Kara didn't need the extra miles, but is that your, did you name your car? You named your car, Carrie. Let's go. Thanks, bro, you say. He forcefully nods towards the car, quite serious. You roll your eyes and add, Thanks, Carrie. That's more like it. So, where's the old girl taking us? The mall! Like I said, I have to reach the town center Galleria. I heard something about the mall being closed today. Sure you wanna go? I'm sure. That's the whole reason we're going there, remember? Duh, of course. Must have spassed. You both hop in the car and start toward the mall. All right! 